Hello everyone, it's Redred761 here, and today I'm going to show you how to upload your uh, module to the exposed module repository. But before we do that, let's just stay, take, take a step back for a second. So this is the last video, or probably the last video, in my exposed module series. And so let's first explain what we did so far. So we decided we wanted to make an exposed module. We knew what we wanted to do with it. We did the required research on the Android operating system and system UI to bring said exposed module to life. We brought it to life by programming it. And then we tested it to make sure it worked. And I've been testing it for a long while now uh, because it's taken me quite a bit of time to create this video. Like. Not like a lot of time to produce it, but a lot of time between when I created the last one and now. So uh, I apologize for that, but anyway, I'm kind of lazy. So, yeah, we just, uh, we need to put this up on the exposed module repository. Now, why are we putting it on this as opposed to, say, Google Play? Well, exposed modules are just Android apps, and you can do them. You can put them up wherever you can put an Android app, unless the unless you know you're breaking the store's uh, terms or whatever. But you can distribute APKs. You can do uh, you can put them on Google Play. You can do whatever you feel is appropriate for your expose module. But the majority of people are going to want to put them here. This is where the majority of modules are put essentially. So that's that's really great so I'm gonna go over today how to put this module here okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna upload our source code via git okay so I'm gonna put it on github now this is an optional step so I'm gonna go kinda quickly through it you could do some more research on your own if you feel that's you know what's needed but all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new repository and I'm gonna give I'm, I'm gonna do the stuff in just a second I will be right back okay so I've now filled out this information I just put upside Wi-Fi and exposed module made for YouTube video series and I did a git ignore on this Make sure it's public, obviously, unless you want it to be private, then you can get some version control. And if your computer ever crashes or whatever, you'll know your source code is safe on GitHub. But you have to pay for that feature, and uh, I recommend making your exposed modules open source anyway. You know, you want the community to trust you, and you want to help other exposed developers who may be, who may be struggling. So unless you have a good reason not to, uh, you know, put up your source code, like if you're trying to make money, or it's like your donator version or something, then uh, I recommend putting it up. Okay, so I've created upside Wi-Fi here. This is our this is our Git repo, and now I'm gonna go ahead and go over some of the commands we need for getting our code on this repo. Okay, so I'm in Git bash in the appropriate directory, and now I need to create a Git repository on the local system. So Git uh, in it will create the local repository now I need to add my files so I wanna, I'm gonna git add dash 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 all that's gonna add all my files now if I type git status we can see that all these new files are ready to be committed so I could say git commit and that should be good uh, please enter a commit message. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna control and pull in. How do I get out of here? I forget. I used to use Vim a little bit. Hold on, guys. Okay, so I didn't think we'd have to specify a message and it would put it, and it would put initial commit in there for us, but I guess it wants us to. So now if I type git status, everything's committed. We just committed everything. Okay. But 
Our Git local thing still doesn't know about this repository on GitHub. We have to link them up, okay? So we're going to do that by using git add remote, okay? So I'm going to say git add remote, or git remote add, sorry. And then I'm going to call this origin. But you can call it whatever you like, but in a lot of GitHub's examples, they just use origin. So if I'm ever trying to look something up, you know, that's what it is. So I'm just using origin, okay? And then um, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to type in the address now. So https colon slash slash github.com, obviously. And then I'm going to put rye761, because that's my GitHub username, slash upside wifi.git. And that should be good. So now if I try and git push, it'll complain that I, I have stuff on that repo that I haven't pulled down. So I'm just going to say git pull. And... Said it counted objects four, total four. Alright, please specify the. So I'm gonna pull from master. Origin master. There we go. So that's merged. Our stuff now if I go to get status I don't think we'll learn anything new no but now I can get push origin master and it's gonna ask me what my username is so rise 761 it's gonna ask me what my password is you guys can't know that and it's just gonna push our stuff up onto the repo So there we go, it's done, and if we refresh this page, we see, boom, we have all our stuff. So all our stuff is here, all our source code and everything. So if we need to access it on another computer, or we want other developers to be able to use it for reference, or just see like what we did, you know, to make sure we're not doing anything fishy uh, in our source code, then, you know, you can see that now. So we have this GitHub repo and now everyone can go see our code they can even fork it themselves so if they want to make some changes and then they can pull requests back to you or they can create an entire fork of your expose module if they want so um yeah i highly recommend github it's just really good for putting up your source code because it's really convenient when you come to someone's github repo and now you don't have to worry about downloading source code and whatever you could just go in here and oh okay oh they did this oh they did the set rotation okay cool so, if you're trying to like figure out how to do something, it's really useful and just nice for people who just want to take a quick look at your code. So anyway, now that we've got that, we need to log into here with our XDA developers account. And it's going to ask me, do I want to trust this site? And I'm going to say confirm. And boom, I get all my modules. If you don't have any modules yet, then you won't get all your modules. But this is all my modules. So I have these four, and then this one's just continued. So now we want to go to upload new module. Okay, so I can start here. I'm going to start with up side Wi Fi, then my package name. So, a good way to find your package name is just look at the top of your thing. Rybred761.upside Wi-Fi. And I have these ones here, so I'm just going to go like this. And then a summary of what it does. So, changes the Wi-Fi icon direction. And then description. So, I'm just going to write this up real quick. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've, you know, put in some information about my exposed module and what it does. If you're confused as to what this thing is, it's just a HTML link 
So if you don't know how to do that, it's very, very simple. I would highly recommend learning the basic HTML tags. But, um, you know, if you don't know how to do that, that doesn't matter. For the majority of modules, you won't have to do that. That's just linking my YouTube playlist for this series. So if people want to follow along and see how this module is made, they can do that. So, but we've got a small problem. So our support slash discussion URL. We don't have one of those, okay? And this is something that I find really annoying. Here, you are required to provide a support slash discussion URL. So you go over to XDA and you make your thread. But when you want to tell people on XDA where they can get the module, oh wait, they can't get it yet. So what I usually do is I say on the repo and then I put in like brackets just a minute uploading or something. And then I come over here, I paste that in, I submit it, and then I link it up. Uh, so once I have everything but that done, you know, it, it's kind of like you need it in two places at once. You need to submit two forms at the exact same time sort of thing. And this one needs to know about this one, and this one needs to know about this one. So it's kind of annoying. But anyway, that's not impossible to get across. What is impossible for us at this moment, though, is going to a new version. We don't have an APK ready to go. We don't have any of that. So how do we create an Android application file? So, or an Android package. So, basically, doing this is real simple. All we have to do is right click our project in Eclipse, go to export. Okay? And we're going to export an Android application. Select the project export. So, I'm going to use create a new key store. A key store is like a thing that allows you to sign your application. I don't really know a lot about them besides just that I need one and it prompts me for one. So I'm just going to browse for where I would like this. So I'm going to put it in Android Keys. And I'm going to call this one Upside Wi-Fi. I generally create a new thing for each thing I do, like a new key for each thing I do. You have to have this key if you want to be able to update your app. It's crucial. Otherwise it won't work. So if you want to update your expose module in the future, it's crucial that you have this key because otherwise it'll give people an error when they try to install it if you don't sign it with the same key. So that's something important to keep in mind. But I'm just going to put a quick password here and another quick password and boom. Okay, so another one is this alias thing. So I'm going to call this upside Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but yeah, I think it's so that you can have like your key. So if you had like a company or something, and then you had multiple applications, you can sign it with the same key under different aliases. But I'm not really sure, so I just generally like make new keys all the time. Uh, helps me keep organized, believe it or not. So anyway, for my password, I generally make this the same, and. For my validity, I usually put like 35 years or something. There's a value that Google Play Store won't take applications signed under like a certain value, you know. But uh, I don't really know what that value is, unfortunately. But I think it's something, I think it's either in the 30s or 40s years. So I just generally go with like 35 or something. And I know we'll be good for exposed modules because by that time, I don't think exposed will work anymore. But I could be wrong. So... This stuff here seems like a lot of information, but it's really, like, not really that bad. For first and last name, I can pretty much just put, like, I'm Ryan, and it'll be like, okay. So, you don't, you just have to put one thing, and you can put, like, a country code, or, like, your city, or, like, your province, or state. But I, I just put that I'm Ryan, and, you know, sweet. So, destination APK file. This is where we're going to save it. So, I'm going to save this in Android exported APKs and upside Wi Fi.apk. The certificate will expire in 35 years. Finish. So, sweet. Now I have that done. So, now I can go back here, click browse, go to upside Wi Fi, open. 
It will fill this stuff out for you based on the information in your Android manifest. So when you update it and you want to change the version, that's what you have to do. This is if you have betas or experimental versions of your modules. And this is a useful feature to tell people, you know, what they're updating for. This is a really good system, like this whole expose repo thing, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, the branch has been replaced by release type. So the changes, we don't really have any changes. So that's good. So now what we have to do is we have to go over to XDA developers real quick because the last thing to do is create our thread on XDA. So they now have an exposed framework module thing. And I'm just going to create a new thread. I'm going to fill out some information here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, I've uploaded a screenshot here on Imager, and I've, you know, done some write-ups here. Just a simple, you know, thing. I'm just going to say get it on the repository. And once I'm done, I can link this, but I can't now. So I'll put some tags in and whatnot. Let's get submit new thread. There we go. So we got that nice screenshot in there showing what our module does. Just flips that icon. It's gonna got it work in there. And now I can come over here. I can copy. I can paste. And we should be good to save this onto the exposed repo. And you see now we have our URL here, so I can again go and copy, I can edit, then I can go on here and link it up. Okay? Save. Sweet. So that's pretty much our modules pushed out now. That's pretty much the end of the series, guys. If you've been following it, uh, I thank you for watching, and I really do hope that you will watch future videos on the channel. I can't guarantee that they will be about Android development, but I do hope they will interest at least a few of you. And yeah, peace out.